same thing, man, can happen to me. Shout out to Marcus Garvey, Noble Drew Ali. And before you start to judge, what if you was me? Most young black men don't make it till 23. They rather live with tech nines in them two, two, threes. Better hope that you can rap, sing, and shoot those threes. Or hustle young men and go and move those keys. Muhammad and Muhammad Ali This the type of song that make you riot in the streets Peace the ABO, man, you wired the beats All imitate life, I'm inspired to speak I need an army, need religion, need a choir with me If you can find yourself in position, then edition of Baba TV House of Consciousness. I'm uh, just interviewing our people today. This brother been knowing me since probably I was a teenager. Uh, Baba J, when I first came into the store, he was uh, one of Rafu's assistants. And I just wanted to ask uh, Baba J, who, what do you think about uh, what happened uh, with the brother who shot and killed five of those white dudes? My intake on that is, like what Malcolm says, the chicken is coming home to roost. Uh, a people that has been oppressed for so many years and constantly being oppressed by the police force and stuff, it was a, but a matter of time before retaliation by somebody would occur. It, it's injustice for the black youth and the black race to be shot down by the police department and constantly walk away from it. Innocent people are being killed by the police. And this was just a form of retaliation by that individual that did what he did. I think that would send a message to the people that the only way you can deal with this is the same way it's being brought to you. We have to stand up and be accountable for the actions that's being done against us and we have to hold those that have power accountable for these senseless shooting in the black community. I think that the brother that did that was like Fannie Lou Heyman. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that enough is enough. If you push a person to a point where he or she has to defend himself, then this is the result of it. Yeah. Don't blame the brother. Yeah. Don't blame the brother for what was done because he saw what was happening to the black race, the black community, and he had enough nerve to stand up and say, hey, look, enough is enough, 
and someone has to pay for the blood that being shed by the police. And he went after the people that he felt was responsible for the injustice being done in the black community. Uh, we get shot down. They pay the family and they let the police off, which is wrong. I think that the people need to understand that in order for the, to bring about the change, we have to show them that we are not afraid to die because they're going to shoot us down anyway. So we have to stand up and be strong and understand that we have to be in proper order when it comes to a situation dealing with the police. We have been shot down with our hands up. We have been shot with our, our face down on the ground. No weapons and no con no retaliation, and this was to me was a form of retaliation from the brother. I'm not telling people to go out there and do this. I'm telling people to do what you feel is right. If you feel in your heart this is what is needed, then I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I'm not going to tell you to do it. But remember, everybody got a right to defend Yeah, themselves. everyone has a right to defend themselves. And black lives matter, all lives matter. And if the judicial system is not going to justify these death by the police officer on the black community, then it's wrong. For us to lay down and just accept it. That's right. I say the people must wake up and realize that if it has to be an eye for an eye, so be it. Peace and Black Power. Welcome to another edition of Baba TV House of Consciousness uh, on the road. I'm here in D.C. again at the Children of the Sun with none other than uh, my big brother, Tahuti Nebuchadnezzar. Um, some, a lot of stuff been happening, brother. I want to go right, cut right to the chase. Uh, and I'll just say that my view on this whole ordeal, because we know that police have been literally lynching our people, castrating our people ever since our fathers and mothers, mothers and fathers were brought to the shores of uh, America. And with the police brutality on the rise, uh, this brother who I guess apparently uh, was military trained uh, and sniped five uh, uh, police wounded about I think eight or nine of them it, it reminds me the words of brother Malcolm come back and I'll just sum my view up by saying it was a case of the chickens coming home to roost uh, hello black power nation uh, Baba, uh, Baba thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak on topics of this nature but yes, uh, under the cover of authority, uh, police, sheriffs, uh, soldiers, uh, everybody who's been given some type of official paperwork for over 400 years have been killing black men. See, uh, those who were what they call uh, slave catchers, those who caught runaways, or whatever, those who were overseers on plantations, uh, the black man has caught hell ever since he was brought here in chains in this land. So here we find ourselves in July of 2016 and another incident has occurred where the tide was turned. Instead of uh, innocent black men uh, as what happened in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on what was that Wednesday 
uh, brother laying on the ground, the police on top of him, pull his gun right out, put it right in his chest, and then the camera moves a little bit, but he's shot. You hear him uh, murdered right there on the ground in plain sight. Then Thursday in Minnesota, brother in the car, good brother, good young man, got a job working. He was licensed to carry a firearm. He informed the police of that fact, and the police put four bullets in him with his girlfriend sitting in the car and her four-year-old daughter sitting in the back seat. So evil begets evil. And the one thing that we know is this, that a lot of the U.S. military coming back from the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and whatever else over there in that part of the world, a lot of these men are coming back to the United States with what they have termed post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. See, and so whatever the, the circumstances were, here's a military trained man who said he was tired of what he was seeing. And after the last two murders of men his age, right there on camera, in my opinion, he snapped. He snapped from being passive to deciding to use his skills, you know, like to get even for what was in his mind. He decided, hey, I'm going to go out. I should have gone out in Afghanistan as a soldier. He probably committed some, like a lot of American soldiers do, uh, in the fog of war. He saw things and participated in things that uh, made him question his own values. So he decided that, like so many of those brothers who come back, black, white, Hispanic, Native American, or what have you, they come back and a lot of them kill themselves. The highest rate of suicide amongst American returning soldiers, uh, among this generation of soldiers coming back from Iran, Iraq, or, or Afghanistan. So obviously the condition of war helped set his mind. And his mind was he was going to strike out in the name of black men and decide to wake up the nation. And the way he decided to wake the nation up was using military tactics to attack the police officers. You know, now it's, you know, somebody said two wrongs don't make a right, but let's examine the wrongs. See, by all probability, the individual police officers who were killed were not the individuals who murdered the black men on Thursday or Wednesday and Thursday. That is true. But they were symbols. They symbolized the white police officers who murdered the brothers on Wednesday and Thursday. See, like, and he struck out at the symbols. In fact, even while the police had him cornered upstairs and trying to talk him out of his uh, safety zone where he had set himself up for his last stand, he told them that he hated white police officers. That was his target as such, right? Because not those individuals, but the white police officers who have a mentality in this country that when they stop young black men on the street, the way they treat young black men is atrocious. I watched an interview with the former mayor, I think, of New York City. What's his name? Rudy Giuliani? Giuliani? Mm -hmm. And he was bragging about how he had uh, cut down black-on-black -black crime in New York where the worst crime was in the black neighborhoods. And he brought it down through this tough uh, policing tactics. Well, when you haven't done anything and you're an innocent person walking down the street and you're pulled to the side by a police officer, slammed up against the side of a wall, uh, strip searched, uh, treated uh, like less than a man, over a period of time, resentment builds up and it builds up and it builds up. If you're driving down the street and uh, you see a police officer coming up behind you with the lights flashing and you immediately move over out of the left lane to the right lane to let the police go on by and the police stops and wants to give you a ticket for failing to signal that you were going to change lanes in order to let them by, and then two days later, you you know, like you end up dead in jail. You know, there are things that are happening that white people don't understand. The white news anchors 
on these national forecasts who are coming out saying, oh, they just don't understand the anger in black people. Well, when you've had a target on your back for 400 years, and the targets on your back for 400 years have come to full fruition by seeing the number of men murdered, the number of black men who have been hanged throughout the South, uh, it got to such a point where one of the great sisters in the entertainment business uh, wrote a song about strange fruit. See, that strange fruit was black men hanging from tree limbs as she's traveling down the highway on a bus and she's seeing uh, black men hanging. Uh, there was a great book that came out in the 1990s that uh, several people have talked about in the past. There are many pictures if you want to see the number of atrocities from the 19. Uh, 20s up through the 1950s of the atrocities done to black men. Everyone remembers 1954. Remember that young teenager from Chicago who went to Mississippi and allegedly wolf whistled at a white woman? Emmett Till. And you know, like I was a young, I was what, 10 years old in 1954. I saw his picture in Jet. I saw his picture in the Ebony magazine. I know the impact it had on me at that time. So we're not talking about just an incident on Wednesday in Baton Rouge and Thursday in in Minnesota. We are talking about a 400 year long history of incident after incident after incident. I'm hearing all of these some good men saying, well, hey, you know, we have to tell our sons when the police stop you. Don't do nothing. Do just what they say. Live. You know, that is true. But why should we have to cower and act like less than a man in society? What's up with that? Why should we have to walk through America tepid? See, why should we have to walk through America with our heads bent down and our shoulders sagging, you know, for fear that just because we are black men that a police officer, you know, like is going to do something to us or stop us. You know, we've had plenty of examples. So for white people who don't understand, 400 years of being murdered at the hands of people who have used the cover of authority. I think that's the official term. The cover of authority is the state or the government has given these persons badges and weapons. And what the, whatever their word is, is supposed to be uh, solid gold. So what they said happened, happened. They shoot a man down, and they turn around and say the man had a gun. Uh, how? What is the history of police officers with what they call throw-down weapons? The, the extra weapon down in their uh, ankle. So that if a brother didn't have a weapon, they can throw one down beside him and said he was armed. So they killed him in self-defense. Black men in America are tired of the tactics of white authority imposing their will on us their way. And if the main thing that they are doing is killing us, why should a man wait until he's the victim of the murder by a police officer? So young black men are tired of it. Black people are tired of it. We're standing up. We're saying, wait a minute. White America, you have to face what you've done over the last 400 years. You have to understand that your behavior caused this young black man to snap. And not just snap to crazy, but snap to good sense. To say, rather than die just because, I'm going to die because I'm going out to defend myself up front. I'd rather die taking five of you out and my and me being the one that dies. I'd rather do it in that fashion than just wait, you know, like with under the stress of wondering at what point and what time in history is one of those idiotic, nasty, low-minded white police officers going to be the one to take me out. You have to understand our point of view. I heard a news anchor say this morning, well, uh, I don't understand what it is being black. Well, I understand what it is being black. 72 years of it, all right? And going, growing up in the late 40s and 50s under, real, under hard Jim Crow in Virginia, 
It was a hard thing, boy, when you're scared. You, you, they, when fear is put into you, act like you see a police, be afraid of them. As a teenager, like so many my age, starting in the mid to late 50s, organized. In the, in the early 60s, organized. I'm talking about the beginning of SNCC, the student organization that decided to fight back and fight Jim Crow. Stood up and looked evil in the face. Got on the buses, took their freedom rides through the South. Went down to the harshest state in the United States of America, Mississippi, and helped to organize the black folks to get them the right to vote to change their own conditions. We knew that as long as we cowered down and then organized to resist outright oppression, that there would be continued, continued incidents where black men would end up dead and the official report is, uh, it must have been a gang killing. It must have been a, a drug killing. Who else has the authority riding around after between midnight and 4 o'clock in the morning over the streets and finding a lone brother by himself and can take a brother out? See, like, and they say, well, nobody, uh, uh, young black men are dying and nobody knows who did it. You know, like, but the, but the, reason given by the state is it must have been a drug killing, a gang killing, or something of that nature. How do we know that there are not rogue police officers riding around through the cities of America between midnight and four in the morning finding black men by themselves and murdering them with these throwaway weapons? We don't know that. See, but we take their word, their explanation for what they are finding. Where? T July 2016 is a new day. Uh, we look at the events of Friday as a symbol, and it symbolizes a change in attitude of young black men toward white police officers. And so the warning goes out that if there are more of these brothers on these cell phone videos being shown being murdered by police officers, that by all probability across this nation, there are enough young black men that are tired of seeing that that, that are tired of being afraid that that might happen to them, that one of them is probably going to retaliate like this brother Johnson did down there in Dallas. Now, again, I am not advocating violence. I am not foolish enough to, uh, be the ha the, to, to openly talk on a videotape telling brothers to commit to violence. I'm trying to analyze the society that I see, and from what I see, my conclusion is that from what I hear young black men are saying, and from what I see that white police officers are doing, that there comes a time when you draw a red line in the sand, and you say we're not going to let this keep happening to us. Unfortunately, that's where we are today. So for the black police chiefs of these police forces around the country, who have good intentions in their heart. They want to pro serve and protect the community. What you need to know is that you have a lot of rogue police officers in the United States of America. I remember some years ago there were videos of white police officers meeting somewhere out in Tennessee or Kentucky every summer at these big roundups, white police officers only, drinking beer, talking about tactics. We don't know what was not put on camera in turn is this a tactic that you all are using as police officers is this a, is this a shot across our bow what now that you have had an african american president that you want to kill enough black men and put enough fear into black men that it'll never happen again in your country is this what donald trump's secret message really is to white people let's take our country back let's make our country great as it once was when the white supremacists ruled everything and we had these Negroes where we wanted them living across the tracks in an absolute, a second-class state of, of living? What does he mean? What signal is he sending? Well, some of the Republicans have stood up and they know the what we call the dog whistle words that he's using. Uh, we know why he beat out all the quote-unquote legitimate Republicans in the presidential sweepstakes nomination we know why see because he 
is telling white people it's time for white supremacy to rise again and take their country back. Most of those Republicans are cowards, and they won't admit to these secret dog whistle words and terms that Donald Trump is using, but that's what he means. And we know that white folks were really disappointed to see eight years ago an African-American elected president of their country. Because remember, in their view, there's a thing called manifest destiny, where God somehow empowered them to come take this land from the Native American, from the Atlantic Ocean, and spread all the way to the Pacific Ocean, committing genocide against the Native Americans, the indigenous people to this land base, bringing four million captives from Africans to North America to clear the land of the trees, to plant the cotton, to plant the tobacco, which created the base, the foundation for the extra wealth which led to the formation of capitalism. The excess wealth that, was, that Adam Smith wrote about in his book, Wealth of Nations. Young folks go out and read about that because this is all relevant. See, this excess that you all think is your natural right and your natural right to therefore hold non-white people in whatever status of livelihood that you want, that day is over. We are waking up. We are standing up. We are defending ourselves. And if you want to have peace and prosperity in the future, those words in your founding documents better ring true for you too. That this is everybody's country, a land of opportunity for all. Because as long as you continue to oppress people, as long as young black men continue to be found mysteriously dead in the midst of the nights, I mean, I understand that a young brother was found hanging in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, or the Atlanta, Georgia re region recently. Mm -hmm. And the first word that comes out is he must have hung himself. It was a suicide. <laughs> I, I don't know many people who would want to subject themselves to strangulation. That's a heck of a way to die. You know, you don't snap your neck just by putting a rope around your neck and then falling, you know, like, and, and then dropping. You strangle to death. That's an that's a insidious idea that this brother committed suicide. But we don't know. They don't have a suspect. But all we know, there's another black man dead. But white America, wake up. Police, brothers, Hispanics, Native Americans, Asian Americans, whatever your nationality, all right? If you're not carrying balance in your processes as you interact, with black people in this country, the, this generation of young black folk are not the same generation of black folk who were in the early 20s to 30s and the 40s. Oh, that's right. These young black folk are going to start defending themselves. The wrong that you saw that happened Friday on the cameras from your perspective, the wrong that happened Friday from your perspective is a sign from our perspective that we are no longer going to take this stuff. We are not going to keep being murdered and then just going out walking down the street saying peace. The unadvised, the unintelligent, the intelligent, the ones that pay attention, the ones that don't pay attention, the college graduates, the high school dropouts, First grade graduates, the kindergarten graduates, fifth grade, sixth grade. Talking to the single mamas, single dads.